off real quick. Um, how's it feel, man? Five in a row. When's that rank coming? Uh, definitely, definitely soon. Um, yeah, I'm just right now. I'm just happy. You know, it was um, hard fall, obviously. Uh, a good fight, a good test for me. Um, I think that although it wasn't like the finish that I wanted, it wasn't the submission that I wanted. I continue to prove myself. You know, I continue to prove that I have all the tools. You know, I'm not just um, a submission expert. I can go the distance. I've proven that the last two fights. Um, I mean. Say what you want about uh, GM3, the dude's got fucking 60 fights, you know, like for me to go in there with <laughs> like 15 total rounds ever fought um, against a guy that's been around forever, um, it's a, it's a, I continue to prove myself, you know, I continue to prove that I'm, I'm here to stay in the UFC and especially, you know, on the fifth fight of my contract, it's, it, I continue to prove that. And were you nervous at all when you heard a split decision? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I very handedly won the first and second, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I only got a takedown with like 30 seconds left in the first, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you could possibly give him the first round, but yeah. And then as far as what's next, I mean, you've been calling out a certain someone. Yeah. Does, does everything still remain the same? I know you got to go talk to your camp and everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Bo can only run for so long, you know. There, there's other guys, though, that, that I want in the meantime. Uh, I, I want to get in the cage as often as possible. Um, the, I don't do well with long layoffs. I, I mean, it's been eight months since I fought. And that, was, that wasn't the UFC's fault. You know, they booked me, and I had to pull out with an injury. But... Um, Nonetheless, I want to fight as often as possible. I do better when I'm active. Like, I, I don't do very well with long layoffs. And then last one for me, Andre, just with all the cameras here and all the eyes on you. Uh, the broadcast mentioned the Gracies representing Philadelphia. I just wanted to know if you could clarify who are the new gyms in charge of the city. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Team Taino, my coach Eddie Torres, uh, John Marquez is Marquez MMA. That's our, our Philly gym. That's our home gym. And uh, Webb Fitness is with Jonathan Webb. So, those are the three gyms that I represent right now. Andre in the front right here. Uh, you said obviously you're always improving and learning in there. So I guess what are your biggest takeaways from this fight, from your performance? I think that uh, first off, I want to be active. You know, like I I don't like going through the the, the jitters. You know, and when, if I fight once or twice a year, like I have to go through it again. Um, but when I'm active, like I get in a rhythm and and that feeling becomes familiar. I become really familiar with that feeling of, of competition, and that's when I do the best. That's when I do very well. In terms of the actual fight in there, obviously, like yeah. Harold came back pretty pretty aggressive in that third round. Was yeah. that something that he did, or were you just tired in there? Did he do something that kind of threw you off? Yeah, I mean, I think that there was a lot. I did face some adversity in the fight. Um, I don't remember exactly when, but I think at the end of the second or the beginning of the third, he did hit me with a shot that, that kind of rocked me. Um, I think that was the first time I've ever been taken down, you know? So that, that was the first, you know? I, I was like on my back, like, like well, I've never been here before, you know? So that was kind of a first, and, and especially being on my back late in a fight when I'm, when I'm winded and tired, it's like, you know, that now, now we're fighting, you know? So. That was good. I think that was a good experience for me. And you've always obviously famously said that you want the best grapplers in the division, not yeah. necessarily like obviously Bo's a big name, but Paul Craig also just joins the division. So yeah. That's the name that you're eyeing. Yeah, I, I, uh, we saw him earlier in the week. Uh, he's tall, but uh, he looks like he's got some skinny legs. It would be a fun matchup for sure. Is there a date you want? Because you want to stay active. Yeah. Is there a specific card or date? Or yeah, either the November card or uh, December. Yeah. Uh, Andre, right here. Yeah. Andre, right here. Yeah, what's up? Uh, you constantly talk about grapplers, and obviously you have a great background. But, yeah. Uh, Ger Gerald, he's kind of sneaky. He's got that craft defense yeah. tab. Are you surprised how good he was on the ground? Um, no. I mean, of course he, he's got the most submissions in the division. He's got 50 fights. Like, no, I, I'm. I wasn't surprised at all. No. And to ask another Bo Nickel question. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, you guys both come from a uh, high-level wrestling background. Yeah. Is it personal? Because it seems a little personal. I think, um, not like personal. It was personal. You know, when he said, like, oh, no one's got 10% of my, my grappling. Like, that's when I was like, that's weird. And then cool. everyone was saying, uh, you know, nobody wants to fight Bo Nickel. And I'm like, what are we talking about here? Like, I've asked for him three times. And uh, so it was. But now it's, it, it, for me, it's always been 
I, I'm a grappler, and he's a Dan Hodge trophy winner. So for me, that's like, dude, that's a Heisman of wrestling if you don't follow college wrestling. So that's something I want a piece of, you know? So it's personal to me. I don't know if it's personal between the two of us, but it can get, we can get personal. <laughs> Shit, here. we get real personal. <laughs> Back here, congratulations on the win. Uh, fighting in Boston, would you say that there, because this crowd's been loud all week, yeah. would you say there's a fundamental difference between a Boston crowd as opposed to any other crowd that you fought in front? I mean, I certainly don't prefer driving in this city. This place <laughs> sucks to drive in, but uh, the crowd was awesome. Like, God, they, everyone showed up early. Like. That, that means a lot to me, you know what I mean? They put me on these early prelims, um, and people were still here, you know? So I, I love that. I want to fight in front of crowds, you know? That, that's, that's what I got into this sport. I want the bright lights, and I, I'm born to be a star. Like, I know that. So I want to fight in front of as many people as possible. Awesome. And uh, talking about your wrestling background, and just a philosophical question. If you could name one wrestler that you wish you could train, possibly get into the sport, I mean, whether it be the Magic Man, maybe maybe Gable Stevenson, is there any wrestler you would want to see make the transition to uh, mixed martial arts? Yeah, I'm, I, I love Gable Stevenson. Like, if, um, not just because you said that name, but uh, like, I personally, in my lifetime, have never seen a better heavyweight. You know, I, I didn't really get to watch Kurt Angle a lot, but in my time, he's, the way he chases the back leg on his reshots is like, I'm a big fan of Gable Stevenson. Thank you very much. Andre, you're far left over here. Yes, sir. You talked about, congratulations, you talked about overcoming adversity. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just the fight five years ago, the overdose, you shouldn't yeah. be here, your father, uh, you just won the biggest fight of your career. Yeah. I mean, it's a victory for the human spirit. Can you touch on again the, again, that fight, it's an everyday fight, right, with addiction. Bigger than anything you've done in the cage, but this is pretty special too. What does it mean for you to not only be here, but having overcome what you did? Again, it's it's quite an achievement. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what more I can say, but like I'm I'm really truly blessed. Like, um, just five years ago, you know, I, I was overdosed. I, I was uh, dope sick in a jail cell. So I, I, you know, like statistically, I should be dead by 26. You know, IV drug users don't live very long. So for me to um, be able to get clean off drugs and, and be able to make it to the pinnacle of the sport is like, you don't, you don't really see that very often. So I, I have to remind myself, because sometimes I take it for granted, but like I really am blessed. I'm, I'm really lucky. Like I have a beautiful daughter and that's who I fight for. And um, just to be alive and, and uh, you know, wake up every day and not be addicted to a drug is like, it, it's special, you know, it's special for me because you know, I, I was I was dependent for so long. You know, what I mean, I was stuck in that jail cell in my head for so long. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, the importance of Jared Gordon hearing his story. Yeah. I mean, it's humbling to think humbling to think someone could hear yours and want to change. Too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and look, I mean, I, I don't I don't say I don't tell my story because like I want to use it to get anywhere. Like I say it because I feel it's like an obligation. You know what I mean? Because I heard Jared's story and and it helped me. Like I don't want to. I don't want my, my daughter to know I was a drug addict, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't, I'm not proud of that, you know what I mean? But I do think that, you know, hopefully maybe there is a kid out there struggling that, that hears it and, and can draw some sort of inspiration from it, like I did from Jared. <clears throat> Andre, just one here. Yeah. Do you think that Marquez MMA can finally close the chapter on Gerald Mearshart? Because, I mean, we saw Joe Pfeiffer <laughs> fight him, and he grappled him. Now he had you. He kind of just seemed like a zombie <laughs> coming back to you guys, right? I mean, we, we got we got a whole crop of, of, of guys coming up. We got Nurse Latani who just fought that Bruno Ferreira. So we got another 85-pounder if he wants it. I know he's booked. Um, Nurse, uh, Nurse Latani's booked right now. But, uh, dude, we got we – got, we got a lot of studs coming up in Philly. Like Philly MMA, we're on the up and coming. We have the best record of any team in the UFC by far. Look at the numbers. Like we're blowing every team out of the water right now.